Hi, it's Pastor Anderson from the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is a fabulous Friday. It's a day in which we put our faith and our trust in Almighty God and not the circumstances nor the situation surrounding it. Please, let's look, with, look together in God's Word out of Exodus, the 14th chapter, uh, beginning at verse 9 and ending at verse 14. The Egyptians chased after them with all forces in Pharaoh's army and all his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they camped beside the shore of Pihathroth across from Baal Zephron. And there are many different persons who have different ways in which they pronounce those two cities. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? Why have you done this to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you that this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself shall fight for you. Just stay calm. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Now, Moses finds himself with a group of people who are known as uh, the Israelites. They had been enslaved to the Egyptians for so many years that they knew nothing but slavery. The text lets us see that Moses leads them out. As they're leaving Egypt, they are so happy that they're going. Remember, uh, Pharaoh had to pay them uh, reparations for leaving. He gave them all the gold that they wanted. He said, just get away from me because I hate all the harm that you have brought to me because of me dealing with you. Notice Pharaoh finds himself now having abandoned his building project. He's sending them all away because of the things that happened to him, especially the death of his firstborn son. Now Moses finds himself leading all of the Israelites. The Israelites have been fed by God with manna from heaven every day and fresh quail. They get to the point that they're now uh, crossing the sea. They're about to get to the sea and now they have this great fear. The fear is that we're going to die. It's amazing when people have death right at their eyes, they begin to panic. They begin to fear. But the text lets us see Moses gives them great insight. They begin to say to themselves, we could have died back in Egypt. We could have died. We should have still been slaves. But Moses lets them see and know and understand there is nothing like freedom. I remember that old Negro spiritual spirituals that said, oh, freedom, freedom over me. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Well, that was before the Egyptians had heard this story. And so now we find out that song that we hear that echoes in our minds remind us that God wants us all to be free. But notice what they do. They say we could have died in Egypt. There is enough graves already there. Why are you bringing us here to die? Moses has to assure them I'm listening to the voice of God and you should listen as well. He tells them in the text that God promises to take care of you. The Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again. And they ask themselves, yeah, probably not because we're going to be dead. No, they will not make it to where you're going because God has something promised in store for you. This text becomes encouraging to all of us to remind us no matter what the hardships that we live in in this contemporary society, God has something better for us. He just wants us to persevere, to follow the voice of God. The voice of Moses was symbolic, was symbolic of being the voice of God. When you and I follow the voice of God, God promises he will never leave us nor forsake us. He promises he'll take us to the land that he has already designated for us. And you and I must hold on to God's unchanging hand. I want to conclude by reminding you, hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday morning. Thank you so very much for your prayerful support and all the things that we have done in ministry to help so many others. We encourage you to please remember to sow a seed. We sow seeds in more ways than one. We can tangibly sow a seed into this ministry 
by going to thefountainofraleigh.org and click at the donate button. It is from there you can safely and securely give through PayPal or else you may use the Tidely app. We thank you so very much for your generous support in times past and we thank you for your present support and what you will do in the future. May God richly bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you're able to ask, say, or think according to his power at work in you. God bless you.